This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the extrude curves command. The extrude curve command allows you to extrude a curve into a surface, polysurface, or a solid polysurface. These extrusions could be as simple or as complex as you'd like them to be. So for example, if I just draw a single line here, I can grab that line and go to surface, extrude curve, and we'll just extrude it straight for now. And I can type a number or I can just drag it. In this case, I'll just drag up. Let me go ahead and switch this to shaded. And you can see I've turned a single straight line into this surface here. Let me just delete that. So now let's get a little bit more complex. This time I'll draw two lines. I'll select that. Again, go up to surface. Extrude curve straight. This time I'll type 15. Now I've extruded that 15 units. And because the input curve was joined together, the resulting surfaces are joined. So this is actually a poly surface. Let me delete that. This works for freeform curves as well. Again, no matter how complex. Let's see, I can add a ton of points here. Select. This time I'll go over to Toolbar to select it. So we select this icon here. You can see it remembers the last extruded distance of 15. Again, we can drag it up or type a number. We can also click both sides. And if you look now, it's going in both directions. So let me type 20. And we'll just extrude that in both directions. So you can see a much more complex shape. If I click on this, because this was made up of one freeform curve, it's actually considered a single surface. So if I explode this, I hit explode twice. And it'll tell me, cannot explode single surfaces. I can also do the same thing with our standard shape. So if I drag a rectangle, say an ellipse, and let's make a polygon shape here. We'll do a star as well while we're at it. I can extrude these all at once. So I select them, go to surface, extrude curve, straight, I'll hit B and enter to switch off both sides. And now I'll just drag up. And you can see I've just made extruded surfaces of all four of those curves. I go ahead and undo. Now there is a different option here as well. If I select these curves, and instead of going to surface and extrude curve, I move over and go to solid and extrude planar curve. Now watch what happens when I click. So we've extruded the surfaces, but now if you look at them, they have faces on the ends. So these surfaces are actually poly surfaces, and they're considered closed because they're capped on both ends. If I move the camera underneath, you can see there's a cap on the bottom as well. You just undo that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of... Let's see, let's get rid of a few of these. So now we're going to look at the different extrude options and how they affect different shapes. Let's go up to Surface, Extrude Curve, and we'll just choose Tapered. So we'll choose both of these, hit Enter. And you can see they're extruding them with a the draft to them. And I can change the draft angle up here in the control line by clicking, and I can type that was set to 5. Let me go ahead and type 10 to make that a little more of a radical draft. I could also type a negative number. And now you can see the draft goes to the outside. So that's a very handy tool to have while you're doing extrusions. You undo that. I can also choose surface, extrude curve to point. And let me move to one of my other views. Hold down the shift key. 
So as I move the cursor around in the front or right views, you can see this is very difficult to control. If I go over to the front view, if you look in the right view, the cursor wants to stay on the C plane in the right view. And if I move the cursor over to the right view, the point wants to stay on the C plane of the front view. So if you're going to use the two point command, I recommend using something to actually align the point to. So let me turn on my center snap. And I'll draw points up here. And I'll do the same thing for the rectangle. So let me go ahead and do surface, extrude curve to point. Now if I snap on the point, you can see in both views that it's constrained to that control point. And it gives me the result I was looking for. Same with the rectangle. I can bring that up and snap to either of the ends or to the midpoint. And that gives me that pyramid shape that I was looking for. Go ahead and undo that. Final one we'll look at is under surface, extrude curve, a long curve. So let's go ahead and draw a curve here. And I'll just drag this curve out and draw a few different control points here. So let me choose surface, extrude curve, a long curve. So it's asking us to select the curve to extrude, which is this shape here. Hit enter. And then I want to pick the path curve near the start. So that's the shape it makes. This surface is somewhat similar to using the one rail sweep command, with the big difference being in this particular instance, the input curve or the extruded curve does not change its angle to flow perpendicular along the path curve. Whereas in the one rail and two rail sweeps, the input or cross section curves do change as they're moving along the curve to always stay perpendicular to the curve they're traveling along. So this gives you a very different shape than you would get with the one rail sweep curve, even though there are some similarities. So that concludes our look at the extruded curve command.